Hey guys, it's Laura. I gotta be honest, I'm a little nervous to film this video, so we're just gonna dive straight in. So today, I'm going to talk about discovering that I had a tumor behind my right knee, the surgery, and what recovery from the surgery was like. This is something that I rarely talk about, and I don't particularly enjoy talking about it, but I'm hoping that this might help somebody out there in some way. So, fingers crossed it helps at least one person because then it will be worth it. So let's go all the way back to my junior year in college. At that time, I was working out regularly, but I was also involved in our hip hop dance crew on the college campus. It was amazing, I miss it dearly, and it was just, it was so much fun. <laughs> So in October that year, we were prepping for a really big show in December. We were practicing a lot, and my knee started feeling a little wonky, a little bit off. And I just thought, okay, I'll take it a step back, it'll be fine, kind of take it easy, but I'm still going to practice. And soon enough, that wonkiness turned into discomfort, and then eventually, full-on pain. And the pain got so bad to the point where I could barely walk to class. I lived on a very hilly campus and I would take about seven steps and would have to take a break because the pain was so unbearable and I just needed to collect myself and let it subside a little bit so I could keep going. I finally went to a minor emergency clinic and they diagnosed me with a torn meniscus. And to this day, I still have no idea how I tore it. So they put me in a knee immobilizer for about six weeks so I couldn't bend my knee at all. And living on a hilly campus with lots of stairs? Not ideal. Stairs are basically my nemesis throughout this entire story. At this time, I was also going through a really, really bad breakup. So needless to say, I was feeling pretty low. So the six weeks in the knee immobilizer went by, and while I still had pain after the fact, I still chose to perform in that December show. And looking back, terrible idea. But you know what? I, I think it was worth it. It really was the only thing that was bringing me any sort of joy in that point in time. Okay, so after the show, go back home for the holidays, let my mom know, hey, my knee is still hurting, so we go back to the doctor and I get an MRI. And you know it's not good when you get a call from your doctor to tell you to come in immediately instead of just giving you the results of your MRI over the phone. So we go back to the doctor, my mom is with me, thank goodness. So I went in mentally prepped thinking that this was probably a torn meniscus that would need surgical repair, but I wasn't really prepped for what I heard. So the doctor told me that I had a tumor on my nerve in the back of my right knee. I didn't know that that was even possible. So this thing is called a schwannoma. I'm not 100% sure whether or not I am even pronouncing that correctly. It sounds like a shawarma, which sounds delicious right now. However, nope, that is a nerve sheath tumor. Uh, yeah, I was really scared, especially hearing the T word. Nobody wants to hear the T word. I don't even know if I'm remembering this correctly, but I think I was able to maintain composure when we were at the doctor's office, and then once we got in the car, I just cried. And it's weird, it even makes me like tear up a little bit right now just thinking about it. Just going back to that moment in time and how scary that was, and I was already just feeling so low, and to have that dropped on me when I really wasn't expecting it, it was a lot. It was really hard, and I am so glad that I had my family to support me during that time because I needed it. So apparently this tumor was about the size of like the tip of my pinky, like this kind of first knuckle. And when you think about the size of a nerve, that's actually kind of big, relatively. And I was also told that we were going to have to get it surgically removed. I had never gone through surgery before, so hearing the T word and then surgery, I was... I was a bit of a mess. So the surgery was scheduled for late January, still within my junior year, and I specifically remember that the neurosurgeon told me, one, that that scar would probably be about an inch, an inch and a half long, and two, after surgery, 
I wouldn't need crutches, I'd be able to walk just fine, everything would be good to go. Do you see where this is going? Fortunately, they were able to remove the entire tumor. Really, really grateful to this day. But unfortunately, they ran into some complications and had a hard time getting it out. So instead of the scar being an inch and a half long, we discovered a few days later when we undid the dressing that it was a whopping five inches long. And this scar wasn't just like a long, thin little scar. No, this thing was bright, ugly purple, and it was long, and it was thick. This thing looked like a big earthworm on my leg. It was gross. But at least we got the tumor out, right? Well, as I mentioned, there were a few little complications and there was a little bit of nerve damage. I couldn't fully extend my leg and it was the most surreal experience because I would sit there and think, all right, extend my leg. And you know how you just kind of do it. I would think that and nothing would happen. There was zero connection. So walking wasn't something that was possible for over a month. My wonderful mom went and got me crutches and remember how I said that I went to a college with a very hilly campus? Stairs, still the enemy. <laughs> and I had too much pride to ask for help. And if I could do anything over again, it would be asking for more help. So back to my leg not moving. Slowly the nerve connection in my leg started to come back and I remember it vividly. I would do the same thing, trying to extend my leg and instead of not doing anything, it would just shake. It would shake pretty violently. And I thought it was kind of cool, but I know that it freaked out my mom. And a huge shout out to her for just being such a champion and driving me to and from San Antonio and Houston Gosh, like every week for like a month for doctor's appointments and all sorts of craziness. She was and is the best. Can you tell my mom and I are super close? Love you, mom. So let's focus more on what recovery looked like. And this is a much longer process and it's a little more complex. So I started physical therapy. I can't remember how far out from surgery. I don't think it was that far out, but two to three times a week for eight weeks. And this was where I finally, finally learned that apparently when you get surgery and you get a scar, you're supposed to massage the scar, which I think is really counterintuitive, but you're supposed to do that to make sure that the tissue around the incision doesn't get stuck to the tissue underneath. And that is what was happening. That area got really, really tight and we spent a good chunk of each physical therapy session just massaging the scar. And since I had such limited use of my right leg for so many months, those muscles had atrophied. I had a chicken leg and it was quite visible. I was very eager to regain the muscle in my right leg so I at least looked even. I knew I needed to work on basic functionality first because my balance and my coordination and everything was really messed up. And I am proud to say that I did all of my physical therapy homework, I did all of the exercises, I never missed a PT session. I was determined. And through all this, I could eventually walk without crutches, which was so exciting, but it was clear that my balance and coordination was way off. The number one issue that I had even years after the surgery was walking downstairs, to my surprise. And I don't think walking downstairs felt normal for about four to five years after the surgery took place. After those eight weeks of physical therapy, I had made a ton of progress, but there was still plenty of work that needed to be done and I really wanted to start regaining some of the muscle that I had lost. I knew I needed to be gentle and I was like easing into more activity as the rest of the school year went on, but by summer I was ready for a challenge. So this is when I decided to try my first ever structured workout program of all things, Insanity from Beachbody. Now, Insanity is a 60 day program that focuses a lot on cardio and circuits and body weight exercises, and jumping. Lots and lots of jumping. 
This is not a beginner program, nor is this a program for somebody who just went through surgery. I think at the time I really just wanted to prove to myself and to the world that I could do this program. This was going to be hard and challenging, but I was strong, I was tough, I could do it. I would do things a lot differently now. By the end of the program, muscle was growing back, but I do have to say that my calf muscle felt weird. I can't think of a better way to describe it other than it felt like my right calf muscle was shorter than my left. But you know what? I did complete that entire program. I was really proud of myself. And that's what kickstarted my whole passion and love for exercise and movement. So throughout the rest of college, I explored and did other workouts that I found online. I felt like I knew what I was doing, but ultimately, I didn't know what I was doing. I was very naive. I had a lot to learn. It's been a little over nine years since I had that surgery. And rather than giving you unnecessary detail, I'll keep the rest of my recovery at a high level. So after I graduated college, I have continued to do workouts more refined. I have a much better idea of what I'm doing, but what I want to talk about and focus on is discovering yoga and slacklining. I also discovered acro yoga, but that doesn't really apply to the whole recovery aspect of this whole experience. So I found that for me, yoga and slacklining really helped me with my long-term recovery. Yoga helped me stretch and open up those muscles and also helped me significantly with balance. And slacklining, to my surprise, is what I think helped the most with regaining my balance. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with slacklining, basically you have two anchor points, say two trees, and you have a thin piece of webbing ranging generally from an inch to two inches wide, and you don't have it super, super tight there's slack so it moves and you basically you try to walk on it and you try to balance on it. Now there is a steep learning curve to slacklining especially if you don't have somebody who is guiding you through in an effective way which is not something that I had. Basically with slacklining you're trying to balance on a dynamic one inch piece of webbing. So ultimately I was sending the right signals to my body to help me adapt and better learn the art of balance to really fire those stabilizing muscles. As I mentioned before, I feel like it took me about four to five years for my leg and my balance, particularly walking downstairs, to feel normal. Things were finally feeling the way that they felt before the surgery. The only big difference was that I had a pretty gnarly scar. So let's talk about the scar. I used to be so self-conscious about it. It was such a dark purple color that first year and it was thick and wide from the very beginning. And I have looked all over the place to see if I could find a picture to show you guys, and I couldn't find one. I'm honestly not surprised I couldn't find anything because, let's face it, I wasn't taking a lot of pictures during that time in my life. I was ashamed of it. I was really sensitive, and I also hated it when people would ask me what happened. Particularly those who asked in a way where they're being more nosy and they just wanted to know what happened to know rather than to know because they cared. And when I was getting the vibe from people that they just wanted to know, I made up a story. So the true part of the story is that I went to Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas, and it's within walking distance of the zoo. So here's the fake part of the story. There was a bear that had escaped from the zoo and a text alert was sent out to all students and faculty basically to keep an eye out for the bear. If you see it, contact so-and-so, stay indoors. So in typical fashion, I didn't have my phone on me. I'm walking around campus and I encounter the bear. So without thinking, I start running and the bear quickly catches up to me and slashes the back of my leg. And thankfully, there were people who saw it and they were able to come help. I've told this story a handful of times and thankfully the vast majority of people knew that this wasn't real. But there was one person, it was a little freshman, who believed me and I quickly told them, no, this is, here's what really happened. But nowadays I'm not really faced by the scar. It's faded significantly and I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, the back of my leg isn't pretty. But you know what? It's me. It tells a story. It reminds me to be grateful to be able to walk. It reminds me that I'm tough and I'm strong and it reminds me of how much happier I am now. 
Now overall, I'd say that it's 98% healed. So why I'm not giving it a 100% healed? Two reasons. The first reason is because I don't seem to experience physical touch the same way behind my right knee than behind my left knee. Not that I'm ever feeling behind my knees that often, but it does feel different and I do notice it from time to time. It doesn't really bother me, but it's just something I'm kind of aware of. Now the second reason, and this doesn't happen often, in fact it happens maybe every other month for a few seconds or a few minutes, there's no telling when it's going to happen, I don't know what triggers it, but sometimes it feels like the nerves in my right leg are misfiring. It's painful and it feels kind of prickly and it's just icky and I don't like it and I can't predict when it's going to happen. It's not super invasive, but it's just one of those things that's kind of like, ugh, I don't like that. But if that's my biggest problem, I think I'm pretty lucky. Over the years, this whole experience has taught me to be comfortable in my own skin, to celebrate even the smallest victories, and to remind myself what I'm capable of and what my body is capable of in that moment. So again, this is my experience. Are there things I wish I would have done differently? Absolutely. But everyone's recovery is different and I'm really happy with where I'm at. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped somebody out there. Please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys!